Hello, I'm Margaret Collingwood. And I'm Jeremy Collingwood. And in this programme, we're hoping to explore some of the issues around retirement. Is this the end of the road and we're past our time of usefulness and service? Are we past our sell-by date and just watching others do their bit? Or can this be a new and exciting stage in life's journey? I'm a retired vicar and I've always rather disliked the word retired unless you spell it with a Y. Perhaps it'd be better to say we're retreads. Sometimes I say I'm in pensioned ministry. But you're fortunate enough to be able to carry on preaching and leading services even though you're no longer a vicar of a parish. Yes, that's true, and it's one of the great advantages of uh, my job. But I have to say that it was with a real sense of bereavement that I left my last parish. I missed the people with whom I'd lived and worked. I missed my colleagues and our team meetings. And for a while I felt a bit like a fish out of water. And I can remember it as something of a difficult time too. I missed my colleagues, I missed community, I missed networking and friends of course. And often I felt quite lonely and even invisible. But I've been fortunate too being able to carry on with counselling work and making new friends and new colleagues. But it did take a little bit of time. I think it's amazing what some people do in retirement, how they find new goals, new purposes, a new sense of calling. I like the words of the psalmist who said, they will bring forth fruit in old age. They will ever be full of sap and green. And these are exactly the kind of people we're going to meet now. People who found new and meaningful purpose in their retirement. For our first story, we've come just south of Bristol to Raxall and to one of the many farms that are typical in this part of North Somerset. Moathouse Farm has been here for generations, farming cattle and sheep on its 300 acres. But today, anyone arriving at the farm will be in for quite a surprise. Noah's Ark Zoo Farm is the brainchild of Anthony and Christina Bush, who are both in their late 60s. Over the past nine years or so, they've worked incredibly hard to build it up so that today it's one of the top attractions in the west of England with visitors coming from as far away as London and the Midlands. So what made them do it? Well, we had a choice in our very late 50s. Our landlord suddenly came to us and said, would you like to buy the farm? He was Lord Wrexell, and uh, he, uh, we thought, uh, we've got an opportunity here. Either we could sell up the farm, because the milk uh, price was high at the time, the cow price was very high at the time, the milk quota price was enough to buy the whole farm with, and so we could buy up and sell up with a huge profit, and buy a boat in the Bahamas and live in luxury, but we thought, mm, maybe God had not that got, got that in mind for us. So, uh, because of this little window of opportunity, we thought, Maybe God wants us to put the farm to use. And I thought for a long time, uh, if you put Noah in place, you put God in place. That's what I thought. And so we thought we would start this Noah's Art Zoo farm with, in mind to help people to discover where their food came from and also to give people scientific permission to believe in God. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, the animal show begins in 15 minutes in the Ark Arena. 12 a day, Anthony is upstaged by the animals in his now famous animal show. Now, who can tell me what this animal is? Here's one. Who knows what this one is? A donkey. What noise does a donkey make? E or this is Donna. She's only five, but she's very good at smiling. Will you smile at the boys and girls? Me. <laughs> she's got... You haven't cleaned your teeth, have you? 
If you don't clean your teeth, they could end up looking like that. Have you cleaned your teeth? If you don't clean your teeth. Have you noticed that every donkey in the world has a cross in its hair on its back? The wild ones, the wild ones don't have it. But all the domestic ones have a cross on their hair and their back. Can you think of a very, very famous person that might have been the reason for the cross being there? Jesus, thank you. Do you know the most famous person who ever lived was Jesus Christ. He divides history, doesn't he? Into before and after. And he did all the things you'd expect.